With the current arc of Sakamoto Day seeming to enter the climax, we see that Nagumo vs Gaku is going to be the first major battle of the arc. And ever since Nagumo's introduction to Sakamoto Days, fans have been relentlessly teased as to what his ceiling of power could possibly be. He's quite easily dismantled every opponent he's faced so far in the present time, but this time we have Gaku here. Gaku is going to be an opponent that is no pushover for Nagumo. And as we know, Gaku is quite powerful himself. Being able to briefly contest Takamura the last time we saw him fight with all of his strength, I think that this fight here has the potential to be the best in the series. But since we're on break, I've decided to make a quick discussion video on this matchup and how it could possibly go in the manga, including both power scaling and narrative elements, more so narrative elements. With that said, if you enjoy Sakamoto Day's content and want to see more, make sure to leave a like and subscribe so the video gets pushed out and I know to continue making such videos. With that said, let's get into it. Going over Nagumo quickly, we know that he's likely the closest thing Sakamoto, who has been hailed as the greatest assassin of all time, has ever had to a rival his entire life. Not to lowball Sakamoto's title here, but I'm sure this refers to how he's like the John Wick of the Sakamoto Days verse, essentially operating at maximum capacity no matter the situation, as he can fight as well with a stapler as well as he can with a knife. But it's implied that Nagumo has always been a rival to Sakamoto despite this. That isn't to say that one is more powerful than the other, but I'll drop my thoughts on that in a bit. In order to get an idea of Nagumo's current power, we're going to go over his battles chronologically. The earliest time we ever see Nagumo in action is when both he and Sakamoto are faced against Kindaka as teams. Kindaka asks which one of them is stronger, to which Nagumo says Sakamoto is, and Sakamoto agrees. But later on in the fight, Kindaka points out that Nagumo was lying when it came to which one of them were stronger. This statement can be interpreted in multiple ways. But Suzuki seems to be very vague when it comes to pinpointing exactly where the stronger characters in the series line up in terms of power. So we'll go with the safer explanation of Kindaka's comment here, which is in chapter 114. Between Nagumo, Sakamoto, and Rion, who are all currently on the same level, the situation they're currently in will determine who's the strongest of that moment. In a situation where two combatants are in an empty room with only two knives, Rion is the strongest. In a situation where two combatants are placed in a random situation with anything available for use as the weapon, Sakamoto is the strongest. And in a situation where coordination and skill determines the winner, Nagumo is the strongest. In my opinion, Nagumo's explanation is a bit confusing, but interpreted as a style similar to Toji from Jujutsu Kaisen. Overwhelming skill and power, multiple weapons, with a good amount of trickery mixed in. And this does fall in line with how he tends to fight his opponents. Such as how he fought Fodder Dreadman 1. When Nagumo toys with this character in his first fight of the series, he essentially plays around with him, baiting him by using disguises and hiding in the debris of Sakamoto's store in order to get him into a chokehold. Once bored, he decides to roll a six sided dice as to how he'll finish off said opponent with one of his six weapons. And once the dice somehow comes out of the grunt's mouth, we see that it's a three, resulting in a curved sword. And the random Fodder Dreadhead gets one shot. So it seems as if Nagumo has complete control of the fight, he'll be operating at his peak, and we even see a bit of this against Gaku as the fight begins, with Gaku giving Nagumo a bit of trouble in the beginning, but as the fight continues, Gaku notes that Nagumo's beginning to pick up, and that's when Nagumo begins his trickery with the dice and cuts straight through Gaku, so he does take some time to reach his peak as he thinks of how he can control the fight and understand his opponents. And the next time we see Nagumo fight against someone that isn't a fodder dreadhead, it's very quick alongside Shishiba and Osaraki, but it's against Yosumura, a previous member of the order. He's still able to contest Yosumura quite easily before his comrades come and assist him, and this is before he started ramping up as he tends to in battle. Something else to note when it comes to accurately guessing Nagumo's power currently is that it's stated that since Sakamoto has become fat and lost his touch, Nagumo has become much stronger than him. Whether or not this means that Nagumo has continued to grow past Sakamoto's peak strength as the greatest assassin when Sakamoto retired, or that Sakamoto has currently just become rusty, it's still unsure, but to outright be stated stronger than any version of Sakamoto is still praiseworthy. Gaku on the other hand enters the story fighting Takamura right out of the gate, a pretty unfair start if I say so myself. Despite this, against Takamura, he puts up an insane performance, to preface what I'm about to go over, Gaku is the only assassin to ever come out of a fight with Takamura alive, which implies that anybody else worth noting has never really challenged him and if they did, they performed worse than Gaku. 
Naku is able to avoid multiple attacks from Takamura, not completely, but massively negating the damage to only losing an arm and a couple of fingers, which is again, extraordinary when fighting against Takamura. Gaku then has another fight later on where he's pretty nerfed, so I don't think it's worth mentioning. Not to write off Gaku here, but it seems like Nagumo's going to have the upper hand for most of the fight, just based off of the combat ability alone and some of the quotes and narratives spoken here, but I want to talk even more so about the purely narrative implications here. When this art exhibition arc begins, we see a three-way page of Slur, Nagumo, and Sakamoto. This narratively implying that they'll serve as the heavy hitters of their respective factions for the arc, or at least leaders, if Slur doesn't really show up at some point. And there's been some tension between Sakamoto and Nagumo, due to Nagumo wanting Sakamoto's team to stay out of the fight this arc. I personally think that if there's any time to ever get Sakamoto versus Nagumo, now will be the time. It's quite the popular topic in the community, and the two characters are opposing one another in this arc specifically. I do believe that if the fight happens, it will be the climax of the arc, so I can't even see Nagumo versus Gaku lasting past chapter 153. And I don't think we'll see a conclusion to that fight anyway. Nagumo is arguably the second strongest in the series as we speak. He used to be the strongest in my opinion until chapter 150, where we find out that Gaku could potentially be closer to the high tier fighters than we think, with Nagumo questioning if he's stronger than Slur. Maybe Nagumo's trolling per usual, but on the off chance that this is a serious comment, Gaku is around Slur's level. This would imply that, with how Takamura ragdolled Gaku, Takamura is just a level above everybody else in the series. So it's either that, or Gaku has just gotten much stronger as the series has gone on, which would serve a strong parallel to Shin, so that's more than likely the case. There's also the heavy implication that Nagumo has his own thing going on that's not with the JAA, since Shishiba has even asked who exactly does he work for, and Nagumo does seem to be manipulating certain events of the story with his own aims. He seems to be against everybody and not truly even aligned with the order, but he does seem to be his powerhouse in this arc. And although there is some evidence to show that Nagumo doesn't really care for the JAA, he does seem to be investigating Akao's death and how she placed the bounty on Sakamoto, displaying genuine emotion when he found out that she may be alive. And he does mourn Hiyo's death in his own way when he gets the news, so he may not be a villain either. When it comes to this guy's goals, your guess is as good as mine, but the fact that he's such a complicated puzzle shows how big his role is in the story as an antagonist to Sakamoto currently, and only further confirms to me that this fight won't last long, because he's got to do more than just fight Gaku and then call it a day for this arc. Also, when it comes to Gaku himself, he's certainly Shin's final obstacle, although I ironically said that I didn't want to go over this fight earlier since he was nerfed, here we are. When Shin and Gaku have their first fight, Gaku's essentially using a VR headset to manipulate another person's body, and with the person not being as superhuman as Gaku is, Gaku has to hold back heavily in order to not damage the body he's hosting. Despite this, Gaku absolutely terrorizes Shin and three other people at the same time. Even with all of his main character power-ups in the fight, Shin was just getting manhandled. But of course, Sakamoto came and bailed him out. Also, Gaku seems to be the slur what Shin wants to be the Sakamoto which is a right hand and somebody that can be relied on. They're both very talented, young, and powerful characters. Not only that, Gaku seems to have a very special or unique body, since it was noted by Kashima that he had a very difficult time finding somebody with the strength and flexibility to be possessed by Gaku when he spoke about Shinaya, which was the body that Gaku was hosting to fight Shin. And with Shin being able to predict the future and such, it's a matchup of an extremely gifted body versus an extremely gifted mind. The fight just has to happen in the future someday, so I can't see anybody really killing off Gaku, let alone Nagumo. Anyways, I also think that Gaku's also going to see Takamura at some point again, because I don't think Suzuki's the type of author to put in little details like him being disappointed that he hasn't found him again for no reason. To conclude how I believe this fight is going to go, a brief cool looking skirmish for a couple of chapters with Nagumo clearly in the lead, but Gaku demonstrating that he's clearly gotten stronger or he just always had more to show us. And then the two combatants will be separated from one another somehow before we get a winner. These two monsters will be saved for both of our protagonists, so I can't see a winner. With that being said, thank you so much for watching all the way through, guys. And with that, I will catch you on the next one. Peace out.